you just got back from uh, Comic Con, New York Comic Con. We were just at New York Comic Con. Um, we work it where we do talent handling. Um, so I got to walk the con floor for like an hour this year, <laughs> but we were kept running pretty hard all weekend. Like my ankles are still swollen a little. We walked what forty something miles? Forty three miles, one hundred and five thousand steps over the course of four days. That's 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 part of why I don't cover stuff like Dragon Con anymore because that's madness. Well, part of it is like because of what we do, like we do talent handling. So we're bringing people like we have one studio for the day or one show. So like, for instance, we had um, the group from Netflix's Big Mouth uh-huh. and we had to get them to the live stage, which is on the con floor. And then we had to get them to their all their different press appearances, which are all over the place. Then we had to get them to their panel. In between, we have to bring them like to the bathrooms, which are I, I nowhere near where the green rooms are. I gotta pee. Inevitably, like we and we've learned, like we treat them like kindergartners. And I tell I them in advance, pee. I was like, I apologize in advance. I'm gonna talk to you like you're a first grader, but I'm gonna tell you when the best time is, like when we're near a bathroom, like where they do all the press. There's private bathrooms up there, so we're always like, who has to pee? Before we get in the elevator, because your green room is like two football fields and a staircase away from a bath. And inevitably, you beg, cajole, whatever. And then you get to the green room and someone's like, where's the nearest bathroom? And you're like, here's the bottle. (laughs) (laughs) The glamorous life. The funny part is, it's, it's rarely the actual talent. Yeah. We have, we, for three days out of four, we had groups of 30 plus that we were escorting around the building. Because you have the talent, then you have their makeup artists, then you have people from the studio, then you have, I don't even know who half these people are, but they have to go to everything. And like, the, the talent is usually not a problem. It's usually their second cousin's roommate's best friend. That's a giant pain in your ass. Who else were you working with? Uh, we worked with Big Mouth on Thursday. Friday, we had Watchmen. Yeah. I geeked out at Damon Lindelof a little bit, I admit. He was lovely about it. He was very sweet. Um, I met his mom. Damon Lindelof's mom was there, and she's awesome. I got to hang out all day with Lou Gossett Jr. Okay, that's, yeah. <laughs> Lou Gossett Jr. was in a wheelchair, so we had to take him separate routes everywhere, so Dan was pretty much on Lou. Hmm. Um, Jeremy Irons likes to wander off. <laughs> and he came dressed like a supervillain. Like he came in like a black flight suit over a purple turtleneck and combat boots. And with like a big belt buckle. That said 13 on it. Yeah, I don't know if he was like in character as Ozymandias or what, but then sometimes he would just wander off and you're like, no, Jeremy Irons, that's the con floor. Please don't do that. <laughs> Um, Regina King's awesome. She liked my hair. Uh, but they were a really nice group of people. Damon Lindelof was very sweet about me geeking out at him. We didn't get to watch, they did screen the first episode. We didn't get to watch it because we kind of had behind the scenes running around to do. That was a big group with a lot of moving parts. Um, the few minutes I saw looked cool. It's not a new adaptation of the comic. It takes place now. So it's like, what has happened 30 years on from the comic. But you but Patrick Stewart though. Did you did you Patrick Stewart though? He wasn't there. I think he was there. What? No. Yeah, no. He wasn't there. Ryan Reynolds was there and yeah. Dan saw him, but I didn't. But no, they had the they had the Picard stuff. Yeah, I but he wasn't there promoting it. I think they I think they rolled it into the Star Trek Discovery thing. Mm-hmm. Well, they had like they had, they had, it was like two pa- two half of the panels. First half was Discovery, second half was Picard. Yeah, he wasn't there for no, it. No, he was there. Oh, I, were, we didn't. He didn't work with our group then, I guess. No. He might have been over at Madison Square Garden. Generally, our group works with like a whole group for a TV show. If there's an individual celebrity doing signings and stuff, that's another. <coughs> that's another company that works with them. So we usually have the big groups. Then, um, 
Saturday, we had the cast of Lost in Space, mm-hmm. who were also lovely. Parker Posey was, like, very sweet. Yeah. 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 Also yeah. tends to wander off. <laughs> very nice. She told me she hated me. She did. I and- broke up her smoke break. She was like, I hate you, but not really. And I will tell you that kid that plays Will Robinson is a goddamn delight. That kid is living his best life. Like, he brought his skateboard and was just skateboarding around the back hallways. He skateboarded on stage for the panel and scared the shit out of all the people that were on <laughs> Netflix. Which apparently, like, his parents are circus performers. They run a circus that raises money for public parks or something. So, like, that was nothing to him. But all the, like, Netflix people were like, no! Um, And then there was the moment we all thought he was going to die. We thought he was going to get stomped to death because they did a stunt where, I guess the plot, I haven't watched Lost in Space. We probably will now, though. Um, The robot goes missing, I guess. I don't think that's a spoiler. Because all the trailers are, have you seen our robot? So the stunt they did, they had the robot. They had a guy in the robot suit. And at the end of the panel, little Maxwell Jenkins gets up and goes, so we're doing a screening of our episode tonight, but you have to find the robot. If you can find the robot on the con floor and take a picture and use this hashtag, we'll tell you where the screening is. I'm going to go look for him now. And that was, he was supposed to go out and do photo ops on the con floor with the robot. But we didn't know he was going to announce that at the end of the panel. So, like, immediately Dan and the giant shit-kicker security guy (laughs) we've been working with are just like, oh, God. (laughs) He's a 13-year-old kid. He's going to get stomped to death out there. (laughs) (laughs) But he didn't die. And he's a really, really sweet kid. That that is one thing I've noticed. It's back when I used to do the interviews and cover stuff, um, cover the celebrities at cons. One thing I've noticed is you cannot get them to go where and stay where they're supposed to stay for more than five no. seconds. No, no, no. They vanish. They're they're, they're just. It, oh my god. Our cast, I won't say who, had all the focus of a group of puppies on meth. <laughs> like we had to walk a portion of that cast across public space just because they wouldn't go where I told them to. <laughs> Like, they just, you tell them, we're going to wait here until we're all together. And they just start wandering away. And you're like, why? Stop. <laughs> yeah, they just, they just were doing what they wanted. It's like they don't appreciate, look, this, this is a convention. It's life or death. Yeah. These people, they, those are carnivores out there. And we had one. You are the prey. The entire cast across con space to their network's booth to take a photo and we're like you understand there's no way we can get you there without walking you across the public and you have a group of like 30 is there anybody that doesn't need to come well no of course everybody needs to come so we're like oh and and at that point like as i'm running these people up the escalator this was this was the cast and manifest so i literally had prince charming from once upon a time someone recognized me Oh, yeah, that was Which awesome. It's always a little weird, because I forget that people know who the fuck I am. <laughs> and someone's like, oh, my God, Tara, I love your show. And I'm like, thank you so much. I cannot talk right now. And I felt really bad. So if you're watching, I'm very sorry. You're very sweet. But I had to get Prince Charming across, like, the crowd. And I couldn't really take my eyes off him. Because he was going to get eaten. Still not as bad as Zach Morris making a run for a bathroom. Yeah, we had Zach Morris last year, and he's a very nice dude. He just doesn't want to be babysat. And I don't blame him. He's a 40-something dude, but he, he would just... ran off to Artist Alley for a bathroom. He would just take off. We're like, you can't do that. So, yeah. But it was a good weekend. All right. Well, we have got to go to the stuff now. We have to show. You ready? Nonsense? Yes. Crazy? Okay. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go off on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I think this is probably one of the best stories we've ever had. I, I, I am not ashamed to say this. I love this story. I, 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 I If I could, I would frame that this is one of the best stories we've ever had on this show. That's, that's a high bar. That is. Um, 
everyone's gonna love the story i already know it i know it i, I, I call it everyone's gonna love this male cat needs glucose drip after mating with five females in one night in pet hotel wow yeah <laughs> A male cat has been left needing a glucose drip after it mated with at least five females in one night when he was let out of his cage by pet hotel staff. Um, Ziapi, a, I think that's how you say his name, a Russian blue, was left at the pet hotel by his owners in Guangdong Prim province in South China. Uh, Mr. Zhao said he specifically told the business that Ziapi had not been neutered because he's a breeding cat. Um... I thought they'd be professional, but staff members didn't feed Ziapi during the day and let him out to roam freely at night. That's right. All the cats were free to walk around the shop, and then the employee went home. Between 10.40 p.m. and 5 a.m., my cat made it with five female cats, and those are the only are the ones I could see on the CCTV footage. <laughs> Zhao claims the pet hotel staff then blamed him for the incident. And complained that some of the cat owners were, weren't planning on having kittens. He said, they had the nerve to be upset with me. I wanted to explain the situation to the other cat owners. Quote, my fucking cat is exhausted and on a glucose drip. And this is my fault? <laughs> and here, look at, the, look at this cat. Look at this face. This, the face. <laughs> that face is amazing. So we know that Hugh Hefner got reincarnated, I guess. <laughs> 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 this cat. <laughs> he just yeah, went on a spree. If you have non spayed and neutered cats, you can't mix them. No, you can't. Especially, I mean, some people keep breeding cats, and that's yeah. you don't spay or neuter them, and that's fine. And you have sometimes you have to to put them in like a pet hotel, and that's fine. The employees have to understand if it's not you neutered it, with all the girl cats. Right, it's gonna fuck something. Yeah, it's gonna fuck everything. <laughs> and if your cat is not a breeding cat, get them spayed or neutered, or you're an asshole. Yeah. By the way, I kind of want to call this week's show "Rum Tum Tugger." <laughs> <laughs> look at look look at this poor cat. This poor cat is just like, uh, too much, uh, too much fucking, that's uh, too much fucking. <laughs> And they didn't feed him? No! Why would they? You gotta... See, this is, like, I don't I, I don't trust really boarding. We boarded Miracle once, our old deaf kitty, and we told them, like, she needs her ears clean, she doesn't like it, but you have to do it. It's really important. And when we got her back, the fucking condition her ears were in was appalling. And then he's like, well, she didn't like it. And I'm like, no! Of course not! No cat likes having Q-tips jammed in their ears, but you have to do it right. because they're, they're disgusting. And you told me that you would. Oh, this poor cat. Now we have people come into the house and the cats are much happier. Someone comes in, uh, eats them, changes the litter. And Simba doesn't fuck everything until he can't really. I can't. I can't. I can't. Simba's neutered. Like, uh, Dottie still is not accepting of Simba. And I think if he was trying to bugger her all the time, that would be way worse. I, I, I so much fucking, I can't, I can't do it. I didn't fuck too much. Oh, God. So much shock fucking. <laughs> so much. Just look at his face. It should be on a t-shirt. I mean, like, live your best life, <laughs> Uh, they're in the right line of work. I bless him. Bless him. Bless, poor cats. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta pace yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next swap, uh, Florida. Okay. Um. Part one of the elements of attempting to elude the authorities is to get away from them. That that seems like a like a basic thing to to Generally, right? yeah. All right, you have to understand you've got to be able to get away from them. 
Florida woman accused of shoplifting hides from deputies in Big Lot ceiling for more than six hours. A woman accused of shoplifting from a Big Lots in Charlotte County spent uh, set deputies on a wild chase Thursday night after she climbed into the store ceiling when she heard they were on the way and stayed there for more than six hours. Store's managers called authorities after Christina Perkins, 37, took an entire cart of merchandise into the woman's restroom and used garbage cans as a makeshift barricade. Manager called 911, yelled to Perkins that deputies were on the way. Deputies arrived along with fire department for backup. Deputies saw Perkins several times as they removed tiles, but they say she ignored their commands to give up and kept moving throughout the ceiling. So, all right. She's already acting like, you know, a, a pigeon that got stuck on the porch. <laughs> come here. Come on out. No. <laughs> Runs and hides. I'm planning to get all that shit out of the building. What? How is she going to get? I don't know. No, have you ever like, all right. Have you ever had a crawl space? I mean, if you just come out, you haven't stolen anything yet. It's still in the store. It's it's still it. Be, um, have you ever had like a crawl space under your house? Yeah. Sometimes, all right. I, I remember, especially at my grandmother's farm. Sometimes the cats would get under there, and trying to get them out was a nightmare because it's dark, it's tiny, yeah, and they don't want to come out, and they're scared. Yeah, the more you chase them, the less they want to come out. My sister's cat got stuck in the walls in my parents' house for like 13 hours once. This is exactly like that. Because look at this yeah. shit. The store was evacuated. The fire department used ladders and a thermal imaging system to aid in the search. Oh, this next paragraph. Um. Uh, yeah, deputy located Perkins' purse in the ceiling and found a spoon with white residue on it, later identified as morphine. And three syringes inside. So you go to the big lots. Mm -hmm. You fill up a cart with shit you intend to steal in some manner that right. we haven't determined. Yeah. They figure you out. So you lock yourself in the bathroom. Right. With the shit you're going to steal. Yep. We still don't know how. What the plan is to get that shit out of the building. Nope. But they're going to catch you. So you crawl up into the ceiling and you decide to cook up some drugs. I just, I love how she just kept like scurrying around and she, apparently she did, um, she, yeah, she, she destroyed their ductwork, the ceiling tiles. They're going to have to, Big Lot suffered significant damage to the ceiling, ductwork, and drywall. It'll be closed until repairs can be made. So she was, she was scurrying around up there like a fucking hamster. Cooking up drugs. She stopped for a fucking drug break. Miss Perkins, mm -hmm. you need to come down. No! Well, I mean, what was she thinking? They're, they were going to give up and go away? I know, like, maybe she thought if she could stay up there past closing, everybody would have to leave. Although, although you know what would have been great? Okay, I guess we can't get her. Let's go, everybody! <laughs> that, pro that shit probably would have worked. Probably. That shit would have fucking worked. Just <sighs> open and close the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> Why do they keep crawling in the ceiling? There's, there's no way out. There's nowhere to go. You're not Tom Cruise. You don't have Ving Rhames reading you a map of the ductwork from a van. I've never been up in those. I've I've been in so many buildings in my lifetime that have those ceiling tiles. I've never been up there. No. I can't imagine it's very it's very good up there. I feel like why would you want to be up there? No. There's going to be dust and bugs. Ugh. Also, don't steal more than you can. <laughs> <laughs> don't steal more than the size of your own head. Right, like yes. don't don't steal physically more goods than you can transport. Oh. That's not gonna work. You've you've probably never even heard of the game, but you're 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 laying down one of the uh the, the fundamentals of Darkest Dungeon right now. 
I have not heard of that game. Don't worry that the comments in YouTube will be like, I understood that reference. <laughs> um, all right. This next one well, is tell me about how they steal piles of stuff all the time because they're special. Oh yeah, I what I, I shove like an entire Buick up my ass. It's no I big deal. I don't know what she's talking about. I routinely steal double double carts of groceries just by shoving them in my cheeks like a squirrel. She's so dumb. <laughs> Uh, speaking of stealing stuff by shoving them in your cheeks, uh, oh. man tries to steal flute by sticking it down the back of his pants. Was this Allison Hannigan? <laughs> I understood that reference. Um, yeah, let, let's see if I can get the, the little bit of the video going here. Um, so you can see, I just want to get to the I mean, one at point. least stick it down the front and be like, no, I just really like music. <laughs> <laughs> let's see yeah yeah uh th there's and apparently it's down his butt crack um i can't i can't really bring it up big enough on the screen but uh th there are no um undergarments visible oh. so uh yeah so that flute's ruined yeah yeah. Let's say surveillance, uh, uh, surveillance video at the store Voight Music Center in downtown Janesville, uh, Wisconsin, uh, caught the cheeky thief in the act. <laughs> in the video, you can see the man has a massive flute sticking up out of his pants. Um, Farrell said the man milled around the store a bit before zeroing in on the flute. Took it right off the wall and walked over here with his hand, and then went right behind where a camera is and put it down the back of his pants. It's just so ridiculous. I just would not expect someone to be so stupid they would hide something right in front of a security camera. Um, oh my. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Farrell's mother, who works at the store, confronted the man before he could walk out the door. She asked him what he had in his pants. Quote. For it. Oh, I got a flute, and that's where I keep my flutes. Really? And, she, and so she pulled it out of his pants, and she said, you keep our flute with our tag on it in the back of your pants. The man made small talks and calmly walked out the front door. He got away empty-handed. But Farrell now has an instrument she can't sell to anyone. That's not a great place to keep your flute, by the way. It's too big, like a piccolo, maybe. Not a flute. Maybe okay. like a recorder. It gets even better. Um, Farrell said, what the heck? Let's make something good out of it. He turned the instrument into a lamp. Oh, so, okay. So now he turned the, the, the flute it, that was shoved up someone's down someone's butt. I mean, even if you sanitize it, <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to sell that again. Hey, $2 for a flute? Wow! Yeah, it's, it's, uh... Yeah. Like, you can take it apart and sanitize it, but no. It's never going to be the same. It's it's no. never It's never going it's to be tainted. the same. It's tainted. Why in God's... Of all the things, why... I don't understand any yeah. of this. Why would you steal a flute... Mm -hmm. Okay, um, why would you steal a flute with your ass? Who are you giving that flute to? Who are you selling that flute? What is going to happen to that flute that's been in your ass? Maybe that's what the flute is for. Ugh. Ugh. We've covered some weird fucking fetishes on this show, man. We have. Maybe that's what the flute is for. And everyone uh, making jokes about, like, the tooth flute. That's not even how you play the flute. It won't work. No, it won't. You blow across the hole, right. not in the hole. Right. That would be a tuba or something. And you right. can't fit not, that in your pants. Right. You can't play it that way. Uh. <sighs> Next up, ooh, this is just a weird week. <laughs> uh, I guess, okay, I... I I, some consumer uh, uh, alert for girl cats. <laughs> what? He said that poor cat. He said the poor girl cats. 
Um, I, I guess we have a consumer alert here if you have a uh, Maytag washing machine. Um, I thought a bomb had gone off. Woman claims washing machine exploded during spin cycle. <laughs> And I found out something about washing machines in, the, in this in this story that I'm not comfortable with. St. Cloud woman fears what could have happened with her washing machine. Uh, ex uh, what fears what could have happened when her washing machine exploded? She claims Maytag refused to replace the high end front loading machine, so she called Action Nine. Uh, consumer investigator Todd Ulrich found more than a dozen similar complaints. Turned to the company for answers and results. Thelma uh, Shady uh, just returned from walking her grandson and found her Maytag Maxima front loader washing mach uh, washer blown apart halfway through spin. I thought a bomb had gone off in the house. It was scary. She found a 20-pound concrete block inside the tub that had been a counterbalance. They just used cinder blocks? Or some sort of concrete they put in the washing machine as a counterweight, I hey. I didn't know they did this. No. I didn't know there was a concrete block in my freaking washing machine. Well, and this is really, <clears throat> this is really a hazard because <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but women too repressed to buy a vibrator, <laughs> what they use is the spin cycle. Okay, okay, um, one odor her- Just saying. One er owner heard a lo loud bang like an explosion, then a fire. Another customer said their unit exploded and a concrete block could have easily become a fatal projectile. So, um, what you're saying, Tara, is someone could be, um, in the midst of a spin cycle and, um, get a concrete block up the hoo-ha. Yes. That is that is one thing I was just I did not know they did this. I didn't know they put concrete blocks in washing machines. And it's funny because you have that video you use as a bumper of people doing exactly that. Oh, you're not supposed to. This is apparently <laughs> built into the drum. Right. So as like, the fact that they're doing it on purpose is a little concerning. I was just and, and uh, even more concerning, we have a washing machine right now. I think one of the stabilizer springs is busted. Because every time it finishes from rinsing and spins down, it goes... <laughs> and the whole house rumbles and it's loud. And we're like, we gotta get that fixed. That's what the washing machine at the cat shelter where I work does. And they literally have it like bungeed in place. <laughs> they have a giant industrial washer, but... Like it keeps breaking down, they keep having to have it fixed, and it's a nonprofit, so you know it's hard to get the money to give it or replace it. So they just like it shakes like it's gonna take off. <laughs> so they just have it like bungeed to everything around it, <laughs> like it's fucking Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> it washes stuff just fine. I did not under since. <laughs> Is this this sounds weird to me? It might not. Be. Any engineers out there who watch this video? Is this a weird thing putting concrete in a washing machine? Yeah, is like, are they like cutting some corners. Is this a normal thing to do, or because this doesn't sound like a? Yeah, last year a whirlpool duet exploded inside an Okachi home, and the concrete block blasted a hole in the drywall. Apparently, this this is weird. See, that worries me because ours are in the basement, and Dottie hangs out in the basement. Dottie's our little goth kitty, and she's taken over the basement, and she has, like, a little nest of dead bugs down there. <laughs> she does. She does. She keeps trophies, little weirdo. But I don't want her to get blown up by the dryer. I, I, don't, I, don't, think I don't think that's going to be it. I don't think we have to worry about that. <laughs> well, I'm going to worry about it. Yeah, well, next up, we have Yet It Happened Again. And this... this we we have so many of these re repeat stories. It just it's woman pleads to owning drug and body can and body cavity. Louisiana uh, Louisiana had claimed meth inside her vagina was not hers. 
Whose was it? Louisiana woman who denied ownership of a bag of methamphetamine that was found in her vagina during a jail strip search has copped to a narcotics charge and a plea deal. Ashley Beth Rowland, 24, pled guilty Thursday to attempted possession of a controlled dangerous substance. Um, seen it right, Rowland was named in a September 13th Bill of Information, charging her with felony theft and possession of controlled dangerous substance. Uh, Roland was arrested in late July after a male acquaintance accused her of stealing more than $6,000 from his West Monroe apartment. The victim, Eugene Dix, told police that Roland had been staying with him for about a week. Dix, who identified as Roland's boyfriend in the police affidavit, told cops that Roland stole his money while he was showering and then fled the residence. When questioned by officers, Roland confessed to stealing the roll of cash, which was extracted from her vagina during a consensual search. In addition to the $6,233 in purloined currency, the jailer discovered a clear plastic bag containing one gram of methamphetamine inside Roland's vagina. Roland, however, quote, denied ownership of the methamphetamine. So the money was hers. The money was hers. But not the meth. Not the meth. I'd be like, lady, it's yours now. Yeah. This is, I like, guess. That, that's more than licking it. You know, <laughs> like, no one else can eat it once you shove it inside yourself it's yours you've claimed it it's yours yeah being in your vagina is nine tenths of the law at that yeah. point <laughs> <laughs> it's just money okay we've talked before about how disgusting money is yes god like, yes the people who make your food shouldn't be the same people handling money because money is fucking disgusting. Don't put it in your vagina. <laughs> you probably have the fucking vines from the upside down. Girl. <laughs> Just don't put stuff that's not sterile in there. I, I'm more focused, however, on the, yeah, that ain't mine. Yeah. How did it get there? I like, I, I would be the asshole cop that would be like, really? Whose is it? I want to hear this tale. Who How did it get there? Who brought it? The meth fairy? Did you trip and fall on it? <laughs> Just walking along one day when oops, and all of a sudden. Just jump up out of a public toilet. <laughs> what happened? Tell me the story. <laughs> Spin me a yard. <laughs> if it's good enough, maybe I'll let you off the hook this time. I don't. I don't know how they. Exp it's like the, the the coke isn't mine. It's on your nostrils. It's yours yeah. now. The meth isn't mine. No one wants it now. It might no, as well I be. Can't. You, somebody does. Yeah, there's somebody that wants to put that up there now. Some gamer chick sold her used underwear on the internet. Come on now. Somebody would pay double for that. I, you know, I can't even be angry at her about that. That's just, that. that is just. That's just I, capitalism. I appreciate the hustle, man. That's just like, if someone's going to pay for that shit, you, you, you get paid. Get paid, lady. Oh. All right. Finally this week. We just have the, the good old-fashioned batshit nuts. Um, <coughs> shirtless woman takes mail truck on joyride, which ends in crash. Look at that mail truck. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Oh, shattered glass. Portland police say a woman stole a U.S. Postal Service truck, took it on a joyride before flipping it, quote, emerging shirtless. And then leading officers on a 12-block foot chase. Officers responded to the Centennial neighborhood just after noon on Thursday to reports of a stolen mail truck. One mile north of the alleged heist, the woman smashed into a TriMet paratransit lift bus. TriMet confirmed the crash and said three people were on board, but no one was seriously injured. The woman drove north for another mile before flipping the truck, crashing near uh, Northeast Avenue and Fremont Street due to her erratic driving behavior. Police spokesman said the woman was wearing a blue jacket, which she allegedly stole when she allegedly <coughs> stole the government vehicle. She emerged from the flip truck shirtless and tried to run away from officers. 
Police say officers responded and chased the woman who was shirtless and ultimately took her into custody after the pursuit through Wilkes neighborhood. 12 blocks running shirtless. I don't even have boobs and even I'm going, ow. Yeah. Um. I mean, if if they're small enough, they won't bounce. Still, yeah. Woman but... was uh, was uninjured, taken to the hospital due to her drug-induced behavior. All right. First off, I don't care how screw how 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 high you are. You steal a mail truck, you're in trouble. Yeah. That's that. That's one of those big old no nos. That that is a huge no no. You can't fuck with the mail. No, they they don't they don't. Yeah, someone on the channel is saying that's an odd mail truck. Usually the fun is flatter. What's go? Oh no, that's right. Yeah, because normally the front of a mail truck looks kind of snubbed. This one kind of looks like a pickup until you look close and realize the entire front of of that cab has been moved back like two feet from smashing yeah, into the. Hard. And like, hopefully she had the jacket on when it crashed. Because I'm just thinking about all that shattered glass. In the nipple area. Oh, yeah. The, the what they they call that shit safety glass. I'm yeah. here to tell you. Um, yeah, it doesn't turn into giant jagged shards, but even the little shards. It's you ever got? They still cut you. They just they just won't turn into a giant blade like if, of death. Like, but have you ever had the cat like making biscuits on your chest and yes. they just accidentally get that nipple? Well, no, but now I'm terrified of it. It'll happen. Yeah, but that's going to happen. <laughs> Grady, you're not allowed to do that, okay? Simba got Dan... Just like he's not allowed to be on the AM. Simba got Dan in the nuts one night. <laughs> yeah. Biscuit, 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 and all of a sudden... Oh! <sighs> so, yeah, all right. First off, postal truck, very bad idea, because that that's one of those... I mean, you could steal someone's car, and the cops could be like, all right, I stole someone. You steal a postal truck, that's when the feds get involved. Yeah, they don't fuck around with the mail. And the, the, I, I don't know how exactly the federal investigators work with the post office, but it's like, I, this is you giving them something to do, and they're probably very excited about that. Um, so you, you, are there, you are making them not bored, and that's probably not a good thing for you. Um, I do have to to admit the running twelve blocks. That yeah. is some de that is determined. That she is in shape. I couldn't even run three blocks from the cops. I'd get like a block and a half and be like, oh, "Take me to jail. Give up. Take me to jail. I don't care. Take me to jail. I don't care. Take me to jail. Twelve blocks. Wow, that's some Ferris Bueller shit. That is impressive. Yeah." I'd be tired walking 12 blocks. <laughs> I just... At what point during the drugs was it like, you know what? I'm stealing a mail truck. Yeah, this is my afternoon. I mean, I was going to go to, you know, like Krispy Kreme, get a dozen donuts, maybe some coffee, chill. But no, 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 no. There's a mail truck. I mean, you can do that in the mail truck. You can. You can. Let's, co let's combine them. Oh, it's a bonus. It's, it's one of those things you don't expect. You, you never expect to see the mail truck driving at accelerated speeds. No. That's one of those. That, that that's that that's one of those uh, the glitch in the matrix moments. And I mean, they must be able to because they have to get from the processing center to the right. place for delivering. But right. you never see them going more than like three miles an hour. Especially, and here's even the better thing. The steering wheel's on the wrong side. Yeah, it's all European and shit. Right. Cause, and they do this so that they can reach, you know, reach over and get to the people's mailboxes. So not only not only have you've upped your difficulty of Grand Theft Auto here, this is like this is like you, you moved it to the extra hard mode. Because now you're on a European style vehicle on America. I, I respect the postal workers who have to drive those damn things because that cannot be easy. You have to unlearn what you have learned. Because you have to drive on the American side of the road. But. But the European side of the car. Right. I just. Good Lord. What the hell. Would, of all the things to do. Just. Why? Why did this happen? And I don't know. Drugs alone does not explain this. 
<coughs> Maybe the mail was late and she just got sick of it. She was waiting on her catalogs. Her drug catalogs? Yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, I, do hi, they even, hi, Dottie. Oh, hi, Dottie. Do they still make catalogs? Is that Dottie. even a thing anymore? Oh, fuck yeah. I get a million of them. Yeah. Now, if you buy something online from somewhere that has a catalog, they will send you their catalog. Mm. It's like, I don't want your, I, I shop your website. What do I want your catalog for? Just, I'm, I'm, st- I'm looking at that mail truck as like, Jesus Christ, lady. Yeah, you did a number on it. I, what drug is it? What, this is not a drug I want. I do not want the steal a mail truck drug. Who wants the steal a mail truck drug? That's not a good drug. <laughs> That's not a fun time. Because eventually you're going to be sober and you'll be like, oh shit, I stole a mail truck. That's and not even fun. If you get away with it, then you're stuck with a mail truck. And how do you fence that? Because <laughs> I don't want to learn to drive on the other side of the road. That's not how it works, though. Who's going to buy that? Oh, uh, just all right. So yeah, the first thing we've learned is the, the steal the mail truck drugs are not the good drugs. No. I don't know what drugs you were doing. You were doing them wrong. It, you can do drugs wrong. You did the drugs wrong. You failed drugs. You <laughs> did. You failed drugs. We've learned that once the drugs are in your vagina, they are yours. I don't care what of the circumstance led them to be there. That's... If you have to birth it, it belongs <laughs> to you. This is my son, meh. <laughs> Uh, we've learned, uh, we've learned apparently there are concrete blocks in washing machines. Yeah. I didn't know this. I could have lived the rest of my life comfortably without knowing that. Now I'm scared of washing machines. We have learned that once the flute goes in your pants, no one wants it. Nope. Nope. No, nobody, nobody wants, no. Also, flutes are supposed to have a case. And you didn't steal that, so you weren't going to take care of it. (laughs) I almost think he didn't want that flute. I know. Um, If you're going to go to the trouble of shoving something in your ass cheeks to steal it, respect it. (laughs) Learned that one of the uh, the work you can't really hide from the cops in a confined space. Um, they have a limited number of places to look for you. They're going to narrow that shit down. It might work if they don't see you enter the confined space. Like, if you can get up there without anybody knowing, maybe you have a shot. But if it's literally the only place you can go... Yeah, they're going to look. They're going to look. Especially when they hear you rustling around there like a fucking badger or some shit. Yeah. And finally, we've learned that you, you cats will fuck until they have to be on on, on, a, on a glucose trip. <laughs> They're nigh unstoppable. Wow. Irresponsible pet care yes. on the part of that pet hotel. You, you gotta watch them or they will fuck themselves into a coma. <laughs> Who knew? I mean, goddamn. And all this time we thought it was rabbits. <laughs> it's like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. 